Hi, I'm Beast Specification, and welcome to this ongoing series of sorts with Skyward Sword. With Skyward Sword HD right around the corner, I want to release a two-part video. This part one will be a revision of my original control scheme for playing Skyward Sword with a controller on Dolphin via Steam input. Part two will A, be a mini-review of the HD re-release, and B, be my attempt to translate those controls to Dolphin, like I did with the Galaxy games and the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection. I previously gave my initial thoughts on Skyward Sword HD in a video that, uh, well, nobody watched, but I will be going more in-depth once I have a cartridge in my Switch. With that being said, let's begin. Right off the bat, this setup will only work with a PS4, PS5, or Steam controller. My previous setup was made with the Xbox controllers as a baseline. The DualSense touchpad and the Steam controller's back buttons just offer that much more flexibility that makes this setup work. So if you have any other controller, the original video still exists and should be popping up in the top right hand corner right now. Now, most of the controls will be similar between my first setup and this one. The major updates are with how the sword works and pulling up various quick menus. Basically, anything that required you to hold two or more buttons at a time, I wanted to get rid of. I wanted to map the sword to just one button, as that makes the most sense. But how? Well, while playing through an Ocarina of Time randomizer, I realized that Nintendo has always had directional sword inputs. In Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess, I think, while holding the left analog stick in a certain direction, Link will perform a jab, vertical, or horizontal slash. Translating that to Skyward Sword, the direction you move the left analog stick is the direction Link will swing his sword when you press the square button. A jab is done by just pressing the square button and not moving the stick, and the spin attack and the finishing blow is done by pressing R3. The sword swing is now on square, the parry action and rolling have been moved to what it would be in Breath of the Wild, which is circle. This frees up some space to map the various inventory wheels. R2 brings up the pouch wheel, allowing for easier access to bottles and the like during battle. The right side of the touchpad calls Phi and recenters the pointer when aiming, and the left side of the touchpad brings up the harp. Now, to use the harp, you still need to hold X and L1, then alternate between R2 and L2 in order to strum the instrument. I find it's not uncomfortable to do, and feels like it makes sense. In reality, you just need to press R2 or L2 on the beat that Phi gives you when trying to get into the Sacred Realms. I can't think of a better way to make this stupid gimmicky instrument work, so here we are. I'm going to speed through some of the special scenarios that I had to cover. A is mapped to X and L1. X for general use, and you should use L1 when firing the slingshot and the like. B is mapped to R1, so you can use the right analog stick to pick an item. Z on the nunchuck is L2. C is L3, hold L3 to select a dowsing target. Minus and plus are share and options. Tilting the Wiimote is mapped to the D-pad. This is for flying and swimming sections. As a plus, it's basically analog on the Steam controller. To flap the loft wing, just press square. Holding triangle readies a bomb for throwing, and charges a skyward strike. Releasing the button throws the bomb, or fires the skyward strike. The right analog stick controls the pointer. Double tapping L1 quickly readies an arrow. Balancing on ropes is done by pressing square in the direction you want to lean towards. The beetle is controlled with the D-pad, but fine movements can be made with the right analog stick. You may need to angle Link in a particular way in order to deal with the spinny eye things in the first dungeon. Boss keys can be manipulated with a combination of the D-pad, right analog stick, and the L1 button. It is much smoother on a Steam controller. And lastly, bomb bowling is an unfortunate casualty in this setup. It used to be its own button, but the sword changed that. In order to roll a bomb, you must point the right analog stick down and then press square. It's pretty janky and requires a claw grip, but the action is rarely used anyway. Special shout out to David Delgado, by the way. He noticed an issue with drawing a symbol to access a certain area in the game. Working with him, I was able to sort it out and fix it, making the game fully completable without any profile switching. So, thanks David. And that is the updated setup. The instructions to install are on screen. Part 2 should be out about 2 or 3 weeks after HD releases, as I still need to play the game, script, and edit all by myself. I love the response to my last video. There were so many comments and my subscribers like doubled, it was really cool to see. 
As always, any issues with the setup, let me know and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great day!